Hi, and welcome to the art room. My name is Robin and I'm an artist and I'm here to help you have some fun with art. And we are going to be doing quite a few videos and um, this is just the first one. And we'll be doing different art projects that are not just fun, but also very relaxing. And so I think you're going to, going to enjoy it. So with each video, there is a kit of art supplies that will come with it. And so you can get that from a member of your care team. And all you need to do is let them know which video it is. So this one today will be art room number one and you will get everything you need to complete this project. So what is the project? Well, here's what it looks like. This is what I did. And of course yours is gonna look different and I will show you how to do this. And then once that is dry, part two, if you wanna proceed with part two, is taking what you did after it's dried and doing something fun with it like this. I'm going to show you how to make a greeting card. This one is flowers and you can do a lot of different things. I'm thinking as I look at it, balloons and who knows. And then I put a little heart in the center. So I'm going to show you how to make that. And so as I mentioned, you will have an art kit. So in this particular art kit, you'll have watercolor and a brush. And now what you'll need to ask your caregiver for um, or a member of your care team is for a cup that has water in it. So that will be something that you need. And then I'm also going to include the greeting card, of course, and an envelope. And then there will be about four sheets of paper or so, a couple different sizes for you to, uh, to paint on. So that should be all that you need. Oh, there will be a glue stick because the glue stick is what you're going to need to glue on the pieces onto the greeting card if you choose to do that part. And so if you didn't want to do the second part, there are other things you can do with this as well. And so we'll talk about that um, once we get to that point. Okay, so I guess we'll just get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is to get your brush wet and put a little bit of water on top of each one of the colors. Uh, yours looks a little bit different than this one. This happens to be mine, but um, just put some color on there so that it gets it softened up just a little bit. Not, not a whole lot, just, just enough. Okay, and then just pick any color. What's your favorite color that you wanna start with? I think I'm going to start with blue. Okay, so you're making sure that it's kind of watery and just paint a circle. And it's going to be moving around because it's pretty wet and that's what we want. And so then you think about, well, what color do I want to go with that blue? So I'm going to clean off my brush in between each color and I think I'm going to put some green in there. So I put a little green in and watch what happens when you put other colors in there. It starts to spread. And as you wait, you'll see that it spreads a little bit more. And if you want it to spread even more than it is, you can add a little dab of water like that to a couple of the spots and see what happens. So there's a lot of experimenting that you can do here. Okay. So let's add the next color and I think I'll go, let's see, maybe I'll use this color here and I'm going to make a circle that's kind of close because I want to see what happens when the two meet. Ooh, look, see the blue is kind of moving into the, into the yellow or the gold and I think that's kind of neat. I like that. So I'm going to let it keep doing that. In fact, I might even add a little bit more blue inside this and see what happens. Ooh, that's really cool. So you can just keep doing that. And, and you're going to keep doing that over the, the page. Let's see. Let's do another. How about some green? 
Now you can do, you don't have to do circles. You could do squares. You could make any shape you want. In fact, you could just put paint in um, stripes or just random spots, you know, whatever you want to do. So once you start getting comfortable with how this works, then feel free to do any shape you want. Let's see, I think I'm going to do, maybe I'll do a little bit of orange in there too and see what happens. Ooh, let's put it in the center of the blue. Ooh, that's really cool. I like how that looks. Yeah, so you can see that it would be really fun to just play around. And as they dry, you'll notice like when you go back up to this one and, and put a circle next to it, you might even be able to overlap the circle without them bleeding into each other, which is another look that's kind of cool too. So there's lots of things that you can do. Let's use some nice yellow in the center of this red and see what happens. Oh, that didn't even show up that well. Let's see. I guess I made the red pretty dark. Oh, there, now it's showing up a little bit. So you can see that those are kind of it's kind of sunset colors, sort of. Oh, look, now the red's moving into the blue. Okay, let's see if that blue in the corner is dry yet and see what happens if we, let's see, what should I put up there? Let's try this darker green and see if it's dry enough yet. I'm gonna make that a little wetter, I think. So you can always add more water even after you've put the paint on the paper. Just add a little water. And the thing that, you know, a lot of people when they try to do watercolor, they get frustrated with what they call muddy looking uh, uh, pictures or paintings. And so that happens when you try to mix things up too much. Like if I were to just try to mix all this, it's just going to turn into this brown color. So it's best to just leave it and let it be the way that it is. And you'll be surprised at how much you like it when it's done. And, um, but you've got enough paper that you can, ex you can, you know, play around with it and see. Now this is still wet enough so that, and you can see where when the paper gets wet, um, the the paint can sort of puddle up. They call it puddling um, in the where the paper is starting to kind of fold a little bit. And you can do something about that too if you want to. I forgot to get a piece of paper towel here. So having a paper towel handy is really good. So see if you can have a paper towel next to you. And so if you dry off your brush and then just try to pick up some of the paint, put it on the paper towel, just pick up some, and just keep doing that until you've got what you want picked up from the painting. So that's pretty easy. I like what this is doing, so I'm gonna let it, I'm just gonna leave it. I think that looks pretty cool. So you get the idea, and so uh, if you, are thinking about doing some other shapes and things. Uh, let's see what else we can add to this that might be kind of fun. How about we could do, just do some stripes even. That's starting to look a little bit like sky almost. And maybe I'll put some green next to it and see what happens when I put the green. So what I did with mine, as you saw, I actually put, you know, circles. I'm going to show you that again. I put circles over, you know, the whole page. So you could do a whole page of circles, a whole page of stripes. You can mix it up, you know, however you want to. And you could even, let's see, you could even put some dots in on the stripes just for fun. You could also um, make some squiggly, just wet marks, and then add some paint. 
to that and see what happens. So yeah, you can get the paper wet first and then add the paint. So there are no rules. You can just do, ooh, I like that. You can do whatever seems fun. So we've got some pretty freeform stuff going on here. And what's really fun, I think, is watching it all just run together and see what it's gonna do without actually rubbing it in at all. You're just sort of dropping it onto the paper. So I've got my brush pretty wet when I do this. I like how that looks. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow in there, I think. Let's see what, ooh, yeah. Let's see what happens. So rinsing your brush off often is gonna help it stay looking a little bit cleaner. Let's see what happens when we add a little orange over here. Yeah, and some of the, the paintings that I've done just playing around like this, they take on images, you know, like I've looked at mine and thought it kind of looks like planets. So you never know what it might look like. I'm looking at this and it's starting to look like some kind of running animal. Ooh, interesting, I'll have to show you that. I'm gonna turn it around, see if you can see that. I did not plan this. <laughs> it just happened. And so you see, okay, so here's what I'm seeing. There's the head and some ears, the front leg, and maybe the back legs. I don't know. Kind of looks like a weird, strange, giraffe looking thing. <laughs> so, but that just happened, you know, and that might happen for you too if you just start messing around with the paint and just see what happens. So once you have this done, you need to set it aside and let it dry. And like I said, it probably won't take that long to dry. Maybe, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And then if you want to proceed with part two, then I can show you how to do the green card. Okay, I hope this was fun for you. And again, if you need the kit, it's art room number one. Okay, stay tuned for part two. And you can pause this at any time, by the way, uh, so you can you know, keep working and then tune back in. Okay. Hello, welcome to part two of making our uh, very cool cards. So you have finished part one, which is making circles on your page with watercolor, or maybe you started experimenting a little bit with some squares, other shapes like I did here, and also stripes. So there's all kinds of things that you can do, and you've probably discovered that when you were playing around. And so I'm going to show you in uh, this segment how to make some of these cards and here's an idea right here. I took the circles and made them into balloons, said happy birthday. <clears throat> here's one that says, I miss you with a little XXOO down here. Uh, the one that you saw before, flowers. I'll show you how to do that. And then another one of flowers. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is how you can cut out the shapes that you want. And I decided to try tearing around the shapes rather than cutting them out with a scissor. Of course, you can do either one you want. And you could ask your, uh, one of your uh, care team members if you could borrow a scissor if you don't have one. I discovered that I really like tearing. So I'm gonna show you, uh, you can see how I've started here and it makes some really neat edges. And so, you know, it's very simple to do. You can just use your thumb as a guide or you can just lay it down and use your finger as you go around each of the shapes and it will leave a little white raggedy edge which adds a little interest, I think, to the image. So you can just keep doing that all the way around. And, and then when you have them um, all torn out, you can place it on the card. And in one of the 
cards that I showed you. That, that's what I did with this one. And so you can see I just tore out around the edges and then there was a stripe that I had made that I thought looked a lot like grass and sky. So I put that at the bottom and I just used my glue stick. You all have probably used a glue stick before to glue the images down. And you can see some of them like that one probably could use a little bit more glue, but I kind of like that they didn't get stuck all the way down on the edges. It gives it a little bit of a 3D look. And then I just took a fine tipped uh, pen. You can use any kind of pen. And I just created the stems and created the little leaves. And you could paint those leaves in with some paint if you wanted to. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay, so that's one idea. And then I also used the tearing method to make this one and decided this was going to be a bunch of balloons. So again, I just tore out all the way around a group of circles and took a fine pen and made the strings at the bottom and just wrote happy birthday. So that was how I made that one. And I also want to show you another thing that you could do when you're doing the flowers. You could also take a pen and actually draw the petals on and experiment with that. And then I'm looking at this yellow and maybe you could even add some a sun to the top. Uh, this section of blue kind of looks like sky and clouds. You could make little clouds. So um, depending on what your images look like that you made and what colors you used, you can do whatever you want with those. Okay, so you can make petals. So here's another one that I did. Again, this one is ripped out around the edges and I decided this was a card to send to someone that I really miss. And so uh, that is a real simple one to do as well. And of course you can write any message you want on the front of this. And then the inside of all the cards are blank and you can write whatever you want. And then the one that I had showed you before, these are circles that I actually cut out with scissors. And so there's a much smoother edge to those. And I used some of the stripes to make the stems for these particular flowers. This is a very simple design and again, looks great. So that's it for today's project. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I look forward to seeing you at our next time that we meet in the art room. And until then, have a very creative day. Take care.